partner of 20 years, Kathy, that she had had skin cancer because she knew Kathy would go bankrupt trying to save, my, trying to save her. Kathy had good health insurance that would have covered my mother if one of them had been a man. But they were both women, so even though they'd been together for 20 years, they weren't able to get married, and Kathy's health insurer wouldn't cover my mother. Well, eventually Kathy changed jobs, specifically to get health coverage for my mom, and just, but just three months after Kathy changed jobs, my mom collapsed, the skin cancer had gotten into her blood, and metastasized into large tumors all over her body. Kathy's new health insurer spent close to half a million dollars in intensive care costs, doing tests, and ultimately just trying to keep my mother comfortable over the next six months, because that's all they could do. The cancer had become stage four because it was not caught in time. My mom died about a month ago, just two days before Christmas. I know my mom would be alive today and be a productive member of society, and half a million dollars would have been saved if we had universal health care in this country, or we didn't discriminate against gay Americans. So my mom could have caught the cancer sooner. I know you're for universal health care and for the right of domestic partners to take care of each other no matter what their genders are. Al, you've already just <laughs> Well, you've already achieved many accolades, five Emmys, and financial <laughs> success. You could have just sat back, away and above the political fray, um, just doing your corporate events, like you say in your books, and collecting <laughs> your big checks. <laughs> but you didn't. You've been using your talents, your wit, and your celebrity to help advance the truth by putting together your own research team, Team Franken, to expose the lies told by the Bush administration and the likes of Ann Coulter, Bill Riley, and Sean Hannity. Again and again, you've gone up against these people on radio and television and conferences and panels of all sorts and refuted the lies they were trying to tell the public. In many instances, you've been the lone or at least the most effective voice of truth and reason. I mean, folks, this is no political spring chicken. He's one of the most seasoned and impressive researchers and speakers on American public policy and governments that we have. That's why, as I see it, we in Minnesota are just flat out lucky that Al was born down in St. Louis Park in southern Minnesota, so we get him. You know, you could have been like Hillary and ran for office in New York, or Florida, the land of your people. <laughs> Better sure of getting elected any position. <laughs> the land of my but, old people. <laughs> but instead, instead, you've come home to where you grew up, and home to pick up where your friend Paul Wellstone left off. Al, I'm sure I speak for many Minnesotans when I say we are so grateful that you've taken on this charge to be our collective voice. We are so proud of you. We feel honored to have you. And we will do whatever we can to help you get to Washington and keep you there. And I would say help you move on to the presidency, but you know, you've been, the you know, language in your book, I don't think you're ever going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> With shoes? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can stay on the floor. You can stay on the floor. Thank you, folks. I've never actually given a speech on a trampoline before. Um, that was a pretty amazing introduction. Uh, and I don't normally go out, start on outstate Minnesota talking about um, gay marriage. But I might as well. Um, Franny and I have been married 32 years. Um, you know, Franny and Molly actually arranged uh, the, the house party for Franny. And actually, I've had to now start including in my speech, it's a uh, thing saying, like, if, you know, I understand if you like Franny, because everyone loves Franny around the state. If you like Franny better than me, I understand that. It's just it's not really necessary to tell me. Because <laughs> <laughs> Franny has been unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, you know, actually I had someone who knows politics pretty well, and I said, you know, when you do this, when you do politics, it either brings marriage, it either brings you closer together or kind of drive, pulls you apart. You guys, it'll 
bring you together because you like each other. <laughs> and that was the nicest thing I felt. And it has really been so great for, for us to do this. And it's been a privilege. And, and you can't believe how great it is to do this. And to meet folks. I, I, I was speaking to some retired, um, retired steel workers the other day. And uh, we were in Virginia or in Eveleth, I can't remember. But they said to me, you know, people in Washington, politicians don't understand what we're going through. Because these are people who had their pensions um, forfeited, basically. And were getting, you know, 40% of the pension they were entitled to. Uh, because it was the Pension Benefit <coughs> Guarantee Corporation had settled that back. And they said, you, you don't understand what... The politicians in Washington don't understand what we're going through. And I was actually literally puzzled because since starting this process, I am learning so much more about what people are going through. And hope is right that I've written about politics and I have gone around stumping for people and raising money for people and research stuff. But man, doing this, you learn what people go through and you hear stories and you hear stories like about Hope's mom and I was asked in an almanac debate uh, this is a point where Mike Cerisi and Jim Cohen and I run the thing Jack hadn't entered the race yet and I like them all and we were asked yes or no do you, uh, you know, are you for same gender marriage? And I said, yes. <laughs> That's all I said. <laughs> and the others actually obfuscated and didn't say yes. But Franny and I have been married for 32 years. I usually joke and say many of them happy. <laughs> It's kind of that's kind of true. <laughs> it's really most of them, happy and almost all of them. But you know, it's the best thing ever happened to me. I'll tell you that. And to deny that to anybody else, I don't understand it. And I don't understand the idea that it's a threat to, to you know, Massachusetts is the only state that has legalized gay marriage, and it has the lowest divorce rate in the country. Uh, so I didn't plan to come to, you know, Sorry. what's called greater, <laughs> no, 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 greater Minnesota and talk about this, but I think it's the last civil rights battle, I think, and I want to be on the right side of it, for, for goodness sakes. And the biggest, you know, and the biggest thing is, you know, equal rights in terms of insurance and benefits and those things. And whether you call it marriage or not probably isn't that big a deal. And what's a big deal to me is ENDA and making sure that people have the, you know, because a lot of people don't realize this, that, uh, you know, in about 30 states in this country, you can be fired for being gay. And we got to stop that. That has to happen. And, the, and, and health insurance, of course, is like such a, a huge part of everything. It's even part, I mean, uh, I've been very honored to be endorsed by the Veterans Caucus, uh, the DFL Veterans Caucus. It's a huge part of veterans' issues. It's a huge part of education. I did a 10 college tour uh, a few months ago, and the first college, not, not the first college, but one more, one day the first college we went to, because it was done over four days, was uh, MSU Mankato, and I and I we had it was early in the morning, so I had just a listening group, uh, and I wanted to 